you're just late. Hey guys, this, it's Final Master Link, and this is my review of Kingdom Hearts 358 Days Over 2. And yes, that's how you're supposed to say the title. Now, the story takes place between the end of Kingdom Hearts and the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 2, while Roxas was in the organization. He becomes friends with Axel and the mysterious 14th member known as Xion. Despite being the only other female character besides Larxene, in the organization, she also can wield the Keyblade. I don't want to spoil it, so you should just play the game to find out what happens. The gameplay is very closely related to all of its predecessors. However, I think it's a bit more like Kingdom Hearts 1 because of the difficulty. In the game, there are three modes, Story, Mission, and Theater. In Mission mode, you can play as all of the organization members and some other characters then do any missions that you've done in story mode. Theater mode is when you can watch any cutscene you've seen. As the name suggests, you have 358 days to complete the game. Each day you'll wake up and go to a room where you can talk to some of the other members for advice or if you're just wondering what they'll say. After you're done, you can talk to Sykes and choose a mission. Once you complete one mission, the game skips ahead to the next day. At times, the days will skip by 15 to 25 days or so, so the game won't be so long. You still get money from any enemy that you destroy, and depending on what Heartless, you can obtain Heart Points, which they can both be redeemed at the Moogle shop to buy things and synthesize recipes. Now, the way customizing your abilities goes, it's much different from the Kingdom Hearts 2 and Kingdom Hearts 1. Weapons, level ups, and everything else is similar to Chain of Memories, only it can take up more space. As far as the graphics go, they are very impressive. They look pretty good, even for a DS. Even the cutscenes are amazing. There's only about a dozen of cutscenes or so, I'm not sure what the deal with that is. I guess because, you know, it's just a little small cartridge that they're putting in, so maybe they just didn't have enough space. I can't think of any other DS games that have English voiceovers, so that's very impressive for Square Enix to do. Now I should talk about the faults of the game. It feels a little strange when you use the R trigger to move the camera behind you, but it's kind of easy to get used to, so don't worry too much about it. And I think they should have had Wi-Fi capabilities, like even if it was just like something lame, like maybe like little uh, mini game things you can play with other people, it'd still be kind of cool. And they could have made it either easier with some of the bosses, because the first time I played, I was only on the beginner mode, yet I died at a bunch of bosses that I thought were kind of hard, even though the final boss wasn't too hard. So I don't know what the deal with that was. Now I'll talk about the good aspects of the game. The multiplayer mode lets you play with four other people and complete a mission, which is great. That is, if you have four other people to play with you, four DS lights, or Nintendo DSi's and the game. If you would try missions under challenges or other circum circumstances, or if you just do it again, you can receive sigils that you can redeem at any Moogle shop for freebies. And for some items, you can only get them just by doing that. And I'm not gonna spoil anything, but let's say some of them are worth it. You can play as over a dozen different characters, which is very good, especially for this time around because usually you only play as Sora, but now you can play as all the Organization 13 members and some of the other ones, like you can even play as Donald and Goofy, which I thought that was amazing because you can never play those before. They each have their own unique abilities and weapons. The theater mode I really like because it lets you watch any cutscene without having to play the entire game again. And those are usually only put on the final mix, so I'm glad that they did, they put it in the English version this time. You have to beat the game first, but it shouldn't take you too long to do. I mean, it took me about 40 hours to do. This game is pretty much everything I expected, and that pretty much wraps up this review. I also want to give a shout out to Pacey8444 per permission of his gameplay footage. I hope you enjoy this review, and I will see you later. See somebody.